Good afternoon and evening everyone. We'll be getting started in just a minute with our quarantine practices webinar. Good afternoon and evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Jesse Sanders, and I am the chief veterinarian and owner of Aquatic Veterinary Services. Our practice is located in Soquel, California. Thank you very much for joining us today for our webinar on quarantine practices. If you were trying to catch us with our KHV webinar, um, hopefully we have fixed all of the technical bugs since then. If you have any questions during the presentation, there is a question box to your right. It's a little small on my end, so please make sure that um, I will check those at the very end of the presentation. So getting started with our presentation, we will first cover what is quarantine, why should I quarantine my fish? When do I need a quarantine system? And the components of a quarantine system. Most importantly, we'll be covering how to effectively use a quarantine system. So starting off with just a basic definition of what quarantine is. So defined, quarantine is a state, period, or place of isolation in which people or animals that have arrived from elsewhere or have been exposed to infectious or contagious disease are placed. So how does this apply to fish? Well, quarantine applies to fish that are actively showing signs of disease. Individuals that have known exposure to a disease and individuals with an unknown history of disease exposure. Our facility takes in a lot of rescued fish, like our little goldfish here to the right. And when they come in, sometimes we don't know what exactly they've been exposed to. So it's very important that they are quarantined throughout that period. Most importantly, quarantine is a focus on isolation. Fish that have been exposed or actively showing signs of disease need to be separated from apparently healthy populations. Yes, populations can appear healthy, but unfortunately there might be something lurking beneath the surface. Sometimes quarantine systems may require sentinel fish and usually the same species if possible. Sentinel fish act as indicators that a fish coming in potentially has disease. So there's a lot of different diseases and pathogens that may give the appearance that the fish is healthy. However, that individual might just be a carrier state that will never show signs of disease. So it's very important that some of these systems have carrier, uh, excuse me, sentinel fish that will act and contract the disease in case it is being carried by fish that are non-symptomatic. So why should I quarantine my fish? Most importantly, as with all veterinarians directives, we want to limit the spread of disease. Protect established population from the disease and protect the investment of the owner. A lot of these fish, especially koi and some marine species, can be very valuable. So it's extremely important to quarantine these animals coming into an established system to make sure they're not going to take out your entire population. Now certainly we get this line most often, I don't need to quarantine my fish, they come from a reputable dealer. Well, unfortunately, no matter how reputable a dealer, there is always a chance that they will be bringing in sick and diseased fish. Now, it might have been a long time since they actually had an outbreak, 
but it's very important to ask them about their quarantine protocol and see if it's up to our standards that we will discuss today. It is important that you understand the duration, the temperature, any outbreaks that they've had in the last six months, and any treatments that they've used in treating those ailments. If that reputable dealer won't share this information with you, it's time to go somewhere else. I don't care how nice their fish are, any truly reputable dealer will give up this information to their clients without any questions. So it's very important that you question all the reputable dealers that you know. If they follow our quarantine protocols that we lay out today, it's certainly fine to let them quarantine your fish for you. Moving on to when do I need a quarantine system? Well, back to our list we discussed earlier, quarantine applies to fish that are actively showing signs of disease, have a known exposure to a disease, and individuals with an unknown history of disease exposure. So starting out with our individuals showing signs of disease. Now this can be a physical manifestation, such as the picture to your right, including spots, ulcers, and skin edema or dropsy. It can also be behavioral, such as you see with fin clamping, lethargy, and incorrect body position, either head down and tail up, or listing to the left or the right. Now, once you've identified a sick individual, how soon do I need to move them to my quarantine system? Well, the sooner is always better for quarantine. This can limit the transmission of that disease to other fish in your system and can also allow you to start treatment sooner. A lot of quarantine systems are considerably smaller than the main system, so it makes treatment more effective and gives you more options as far as what treatments are available. Whenever you're transferring fish, you wanna make sure their transition is quick and efficient. Make sure you check water parameters prior to moving to make sure if any acclimation period is necessary. And you always want to limit handling and stress, especially with sick individuals. Fish are just not made to be handled ever. So making sure that you make their transition quick and easy will keep their stress level low and keep that disease from really being a problem. And only one consideration is when should I not move my fish to quarantine? Really the only reason you're not gonna move your fish is when your entire population is affected because essentially you've created your own quarantine system by doing so. So now we'll be going over components of a quarantine system. The picture on the right is an example of one of our hospital tanks. We'll be going through the different components Really the most important thing to consider is we're going to emphasize a completely isolated system, completely isolated from the current population that you have. And as with any traditional fish system, you need to consider the total gallons for the size of fish you have in your main system, mechanical filtration, biological filtration, water movement, predator control, and obviously water quality. So starting out with the total gallons for size of fish. So unfortunately, even if you have these lovely koi, 100 gallons quarantine setup isn't gonna help. Now, yes, the fish will physically fit into the system, but they're going to be too stressed to really thrive in a quarantine setup. Now the traditional quota for fish is one gallon per inch of fish. Well, unfortunately, we're gonna get rid of that right away. Unfortunately, because that does not take into consideration the species, girth, or metabolism of the fish. Unfortunately, we really can't give you a standard size. We highly recommend that you consult with a veterinarian or pond professional and must take into consideration the species of your fish, the size and how big they could potentially get, age, 
The purpose of the fish, is this a show fish or is it a hobby fish? Diet and many other considerations. So unfortunately, there's no real great number that we can give you to know how big your system is going to be. It's just too many variables to play into that. The picture on the right there is our quarantine setup for some tropical fish. You can see in the tank on the left, we have a few uh, black cap, cap tetras and neon tetras. And they've been in quarantine for a while. They're just kind of hanging out. There's a splash divider between that tank and the one next to it. Starting out with mechanical filtration, if you've heard talks like this before, you'll know mechanical filtration is the method to remove debris and waste from the habitat. Now, a lot of quarantine setups are temporary and might not have the full capabilities of a big pond or system. So some of these might require manual removal of debris and waste, and we recommend you do this on a daily basis. It may have a skimmer or a settling tank or even some sponges. So these are good for biologic filtration and mechanical filtration. Onto our component of biological filtration. This is a significant component that is most oft overlooked in quarantine setups. Again, quarantine setups are set up somewhat on a temporary basis. So sometimes biologic filtration is never considered since by the time you establish a biologic filtration, the fish might be already out of quarantine. When possible, we highly recommend that you transfer filter media from the main pre-established systems into your quarantine, especially if you're gonna be adding the fish to that system anyway. It will be well set up to do all the biologic filtration you need in advance. They do make all-in-one units as pictured on the right. This actually couples biologic, mechanical, UV filtration, and has a nice little waterfall feature. So this really does a lot for any quarantine system. Without any sort of filtration, daily water changes are mandatory. You gotta keep in mind that with sick fish, water quality is going to be doubly important from where it is in a regular system. On to water movement. So this encompasses a lot of different things. You really need to avoid a stagnant puddle. It is inhumane to place fish in a standard bucket of water and call it quarantine. I really wish we had not seen this in the past. So any fish that is kept in a bucket of water needs to have some sort of water movement. If you don't have any filtration, an air stone is really the minimum requirement to make sure that fish has oxygen and you are responsible for siphoning out the waste and doing water changes on a daily basis. Again, water quality is gonna be most important for these sick guys. Really, if you have a water system, you cannot add too much oxygen, especially with fish that have gill damage. It's always good if they have a little extra oxygen to breathe. Any additional oxygen will actually be bubbled off into the surface. There are different species, especially with marines, that get problem with supersaturation and little tiny micro bubbles that can actually get into their blood and then into their eyes. So make sure that your water air stones aren't putting out too small of bubbles and make sure that the fish has access to an area where they can get away from the bubbles if necessary. Keep in mind that your quarantine setup must be out of splash range from your main system. There are several waterborne diseases that can be transferred between systems. Good example in koi is KHV. You'll need to add a splash guard if you're unable to separate them adequately. If you remember our picture of our hospital tank, we basically just hung a shower curtain between the two setups to keep them from splashing each other. And that was cost all of a dollar. Predator control. So like your main system, many quarantine systems lack the elaborate caves and shelters that you've considered in your main pond. However, the smaller size of quarantine systems usually allows for complete netting. So you can have a net over the entire surface or a lid or keep it in your garage, someplace that is safe from predators. Because a lot of these systems, 
if they're not covered, they make for very easy snacks for these guys, the herons and the raccoons. Water quality, I bet you wouldn't get through one webinar without me mentioning water quality at least once. Good water quality is essential to maintain for sick fish. Really with a quarantine system, you need to test this daily, especially if you don't have any filtration in your system to make sure your ammonia isn't getting too high, your pH is staying stable, and there's enough buffers to go between the two. If you can, attempt to keep the pH and temperatures of your main system and quarantine system as level as possible. That way, if there's ever a problem with your fish, you can transfer them to that new tank without worrying about pH shock or temperature shock. Your ammonia nitrite and nitrate better be the same or less than the main system. Giving a fish increased level of these can certainly stress them out and make any disease processes worse. A lot of good quarantine systems will come with temperature control. As we've said before in fish, their metabolism, as long as the metabolism of all of their parasites and bacteria is tied to the water temperature. And increasing the water temperature will bring the disease out sooner and therefore lessening your quarantine protocol. However, you need to get it within certain ranges and keep it consistent. A lot of this is not feasible for a lot of larger ponds, but smaller tanks, this is very easy to accomplish. So when you're setting up your quarantine with its filter, try to see if you can add a heater and give yourself a little less time in quarantine. Equipment. So part of our isolation is you need to make sure you have a separate set of equipment for all quarantine setups. We here in our hospital have these orange buckets that are labeled with the tank and all of their equipment is kept in that bucket and can be sterilized when necessary. You have to be extremely careful to not allow equipment to mix between systems. If you are ever just not paying attention one day and you're not sure if you actually might have used the wrong net for a different system, go ahead and clean it anyway. There are lots of different uh, treatment protocols for sterilizing fish equipment, including bleach, quaternary ammonia, and Burkhan. So very important, even if you might have just accidentally done it, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So now on to our most important chapter, how to effectively use a quarantine system. Because if you, even if you haven't set it up right, you have to make sure you know how to use it. So first starting out, always plan ahead, especially when adding new fish to your pond. If you know you're gonna be purchasing fish within the next month, we highly recommend if your quarantine system is not up and running already, go ahead, get it up and running to make sure your biologic filtration is all up and happy and good to go. You're gonna to need to add fish to this system to act as sentinels and maintain biological filtration. And again, like we said before, the time to set up, especially with those uh, nitrogen cycles can be shortened with using pre-established media, especially if the species are the same as in your main pond. It's very important that you know your quarantine period. So this is the duration of quarantine your fish have to undergo in order to make sure that any disease they could possibly present with has the opportunity to show itself and be treated. So this is gonna be a lot of information. We'll walk you through with an example on the next page. So first we're gonna identify the diseases that we need to watch out for. We're going to add the incubation period. So the time that a disease takes to develop within a fish to the time frame for a clinical outbreak. So this is the time period that a fish gets sick until it actually displays clinical signs. Now, and then you'll be able to see it then. Keep in mind again, that all of this is going to be temperature dependent, and that's gonna play a very critical role in our quarantine setup. And then once you have that length of time, we recommend extending the duration by at least one week. Two is better, 
but it's really going to be up to you. So starting off with knowing your quarantine period, we're going to take an example of Koi herpes virus. If you missed our lecture last week, lots of information on that fun virus. The incubation period for Koi herpes virus is 7 to 21 days, and this is at a range of 60 degrees to 77 degrees. So at 60 degrees, it's going to have a much longer incubation period than at 77 degrees. The time of onset of clinical signs can be two to seven days. So at 60 degrees, it's gonna be longer than at 77 degrees. And we're gonna add an additional week to this time. So estimating at 60 degrees, you're looking at about a five week quarantine period. At 70 degrees, you're looking at a shorter period of about four weeks. If you are able to get your system all the way up to 77 degrees, you're going to have the shortest quarantine period of all. Now, regardless of this, this is just one disease you have to be on the lookout for. Koi are susceptible to many, many other diseases. And even at these high temperatures, we recommend at least four to six weeks. Again, six weeks are going to be at the colder temperature to make sure that you have your butt covered and have not forgotten and let anything into your system. So very important to do your research beforehand and plan on knowing exactly how long your fish are going to be in quarantine. It's very important that when the fish are in quarantine that you are able to recognize the signs of disease. And we covered this earlier, that can be both physical, spots, ulcers, odd colorations, and behavioral. So a fish that is listing, like the clownfish down here, or is not swimming, not eating, all behavioral signs of disease. It's very easy to monitor these during feeding time. So usually fish, when it's feeding time, will come up and eat and do all their normal little fishy things. A fish that is not eating, maybe for more than a day or two, is definitely going to be ill. A lot of these fish coming into the first, for the first time, might not eat for a day or two just until they're acclimated to their new surroundings. But feeding time is definitely a good way. You can look at everybody, make sure nobody has any spots, make sure they're all coming up to eat and getting the most out of their quarantine setup. So now that we have our quarantine set up, first, now your fish are here. So we're going to go get them introduced to your quarantine system. It's very important to acclimate these fish in the bags that they came in. That's one of the great things that fish coming home are already in bags so they are able to acclimate you're going to make sure that you test your water beforehand and when they're coming in to know about how long you have to acclimate them if you have to actually physically put new water in or just have them float on top until the temperatures even out when you're removing the fish from their bags make sure to check each closely for any signs of disease if you have set up entrance exams for these, so this usually includes a basic physical exam, noting any nicks, tears, scrapes, missing fins, and doing a parasite screening. So that's very important for fish coming in. However, even with the entrance exam, they might not break for a couple of days. New fish brought into your system need to be monitored closely for 24 to 48 hours when they first get to your system. Again, for temperatures that are a little bit colder, it might need to be longer than this, just to make sure that everyone is acclimated okay and gonna be okay for the entire quarantine period. Now they are in quarantine, and it is very important that you monitor them for the entire quarantine protocol. If you spot a sign of disease, you wanna make sure it is diagnosed and treated as soon as possible. That's the whole point of having a quarantine set up so it's not gonna go into your actual um, established main system. You make sure that you continue your full protocol regardless of treatment. So if a fish breaks with disease, you treat it and it's okay, that does not mean that the quarantine period is shortened. You need to make sure that you continue with your entire quarantine protocol regardless of what you diagnose and what needs to be treated. So even if they break late in the day, you have to make sure that you complete the entire protocol 
And even if you're concerned, add a week or two. We always get asked about prophylactic medication. So this is adding treatments to your quarantine setup before there's actually a problem. Um, a lot of this is going to be caused by antiparasitics. So yes, these drugs are okay if you know that your fish, when you're coming in, say during your um, entrance exam, has a little bit of say a fluke problem, it's definitely if it's an ick problem, you're gonna go ahead and treat that. However, not all parasites are susceptible to the same drugs. So rather than adding three different drugs to your system, if you're able to diagnose and treat the parasite correct the first time, it saves your fish a lot of stress from having to go through all these chemical treatments that may be completely unwarranted. With parasites, especially if you see signs of flashing or bruising, you need to go in there and get your samples, diagnose your parasite, and then it's a lot easier to treat and not necessarily a prophylactic medication. Antifungal treatments are not recommended as a prophylactic medication. Mostly between the fungal diseases are going to be secondary to poor water quality. Again, a lot of quarantine setups are set up as temporary systems. So it's really important that if you have fungal disease, check your water quality first. That might point to a problem there. Prophylactic antibacteria medications is highly discouraged. This is how we start resistant bacteria species when we are treating fish that are not sick and potentially giving those bacteria a backdoor into getting your fish sick down the line. So if your fish do not warrant an antibiotic given by a veterinarian who's correctly diagnosed the fish, they should not be receiving antimicrobial drugs. And now, so we've completed our entire quarantine protocol, what do we do next? Well, first we're gonna check the water parameters again between our quarantine system and our main system and adjust the acclimation time. Just because they've been in quarantine and already acclimated, they could potentially be moving to a system that maybe the pH is off a little or the temperature is significantly different. If you have heated your system up, in order to make your quarantine protocol shorter, and they are now going back into a pond that is very cold, we highly recommend that you slowly bring the temperature down over time. So it could be a week or two, depending on how much of a temperature gradient you have to ship between. Certainly, if you're able to maintain these fish in quarantine until the ponds are equal on their own, it will make acclimation and that much easier and certainly stress out the fish a lot less and therefore you don't have to worry as much about ex uh, disease being transferred. Administer your exit exams. So this will be doing your parasite screenings, checking for lumps, bumps, and tears in the fins. And once they're in their new system, you're going to want to monitor them closely for 24 to 48 hours. Fish of the same species, again, aren't gonna be guaranteed to get along so well together. And even if you're introducing new individuals of the same, uh, different species, you have to make sure they're compatible. So this is regardless of disease processes, you have to make sure that these new fish are gonna get along with the old fish. So that is how to effectively use a quarantine system. If you have any questions about this or any other aspect of fish health, please feel free to contact us. We have a lot of free information on our website. Our next webinar coming up on April 3rd is on koi health and keeping. We'll be covering a little bit on this topic. So thank you very much for joining us and we will now be answering questions. So one, the question we have here is they're currently quarantined, have fish in quarantine and one fish developed system, has developed symptoms and the rest aren't really showing any signs. Well, as we explained before during the talk, really any fish that you know have a known, known exposure to a contagious disease need to be treated. Um, it won't really do them any harm 
And you're certainly protecting against that spread going into your system, especially if say one fish is only showing clinical signs, but the others are carrying at very low levels. They might not seem sick, but you really wanna make sure that you're just make sure that you're going to cover your your bases and make sure that those ones aren't going to be spreading anything. All right, another question: salt in quarantine tanks for koi. So yes, we we do come up with this quite a bit. Uh, some koi keepers will keep very very low levels of salt in their systems at all times, usually at the one and a half to one percent. Uh, this will help a little with wound healing and uh, a little bit with osmoregulation since that's a lot of chloride channels across their gills. However, in order to be effective against parasites, you're going to have to up it to about three to six parts per thousand, uh, which is considerably more. So yes, salt is one of the prophylactics that's not going to hurt your fish too much and help them with osmoregularity. However, make sure that you have a salinity meter so that when you do your water changes, you know how much the salt is affecting your fish and making sure that the, um, the salt level is gonna stay consistent throughout your entire quarantine protocol. Uh, we have another question here about pumping water from the main pond to the quarantine tank to start some of the biologic filtration. Yes, certainly if you're able to pump the water from your main pond into your quarantine system, that's great. However, the water itself really doesn't contain a lot of those good bacteria. They're going to kickstart your filter and get things going. So if you're actually able to transfer the mats, the bio balls, the brushes, anything that you have that you know is cultivating those bacteria, uh, make sure that when you do that, you make their fish in that quarantine system to keep those up and running because um, that'll really be what keeps that filtration going. Because if there's no nitrogen, no ammonia for the bacteria, they're just going to end up dying. So, yes, you can definitely transfer water from your pond, but you really need to have some sort of filter media in order to give those bacteria a good place to hide and filtration up and running for your quarantine system. Does anybody have any other questions as far as quarantine goes? Well, if you do have questions and you plan on attending the ZNA NorCal Koi Show coming up April 7th to 8th, we will have lots of information there on quarantine. You get to see some good fish, meet with me, ask me all the questions you could possibly want. So thank you very much for attending our quarantine practices webinar. This will be posted up on our YouTube site momentarily so you can share it with all your friends. Thank you very much for attending and we hope to see you at another webinar soon.